Well, Thanksgiving is here, and even though I don't have a turkey behind me and I'm not wearing a tacky holiday sweater, I am in a festive holiday mood, and how can you not be with three NFL games on a Thursday? Does not get much better than that. I want to go through these games one at a time now, starting with the first game of the day, the Houston Texans going on the road to take on the Detroit Lions. Houston's currently installed as a three-point favorite in this game on BetDAC. 50 is the total. The line might strike you as kind of low when you consider that Houston tied with Atlanta for the best record in the league at 9-1, and one, and Detroit is 4-6. and six. And if you'd have told me last Saturday that Houston was only going to be a three-point favorite over Detroit, I would have said bet everything that you can afford on the Texans. But after watching them play on Sunday, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this game here on Thursday. Houston, if you missed it, gave up 37 points and over 350 passing yards to the Jacksonville Jaguars, the single worst offense in the NFL. Jacksonville heading into that game was last in the NFL in yards per game, pass yards per game, and points per game, and they just shredded this Texans defense that had been so good throughout the rest of the year. I mean, they're still fourth in the NFL in points allowed. So it's a short week now for the Texans. After that game, according to their coach Gary Kubiak, they didn't even have any real practices this week. Uh, just skeleton practices where they went over the, the schemes they were going to use this week in Detroit. No contact. So I guess if you like Houston this week, you have faith that their defense is going to magically improve or maybe last week was a fluke, and, and maybe it was. Because when you look at this team throughout the rest of the season, last week and their one loss of the season to Green Bay when they allowed 42 points, those have been defensive meltdowns, but they've been great on defense throughout the, you know, their other games. So maybe that was a fluke, but I'll tell you what, Detroit – they have a lot of faults, but one thing they can do, they can pass the football. Number one in the NFL in pass yards per game, number two in total yards per game. So we're going to find out real quickly whether last week's performance out of that Houston Texans defense was a fluke or whether they're starting to show cracks, whether it's signs of things to come. Because remember, they lost one of their best players on defense, linebacker Brian Cushing, a few weeks ago, and the defense hasn't been quite as good since then. Now, it's still been good, by and large. And I'm not saying that last week's meltdown against the Jags was just a result of not having Cushing out there. Because after all, Cushing, you know, he doesn't play in the secondary. He wasn't the one allowing rookie Justin Blackman to go for over 200 receiving yards. But, it, it, hey, uh, the combination of those factors, Cushing not being there, the secondary looking so bad last week, has given me a lot of uncertainty regarding this game. I guess I still lean towards the Texans minus three. But the closer we get to this game the less and less sure I am about that. Now, another game tomorrow I am more sure about, or at least I have a better feeling about, and that is the Washington Redskins going on the road to take on the, the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas currently installed as a three-and-a-half point favorite in this game on Bet Deck. Two totals markets being offered, 47 and 48, and I like the home team here. I like the Dallas Cowboys. You know, Washington, they've been a popular public team all year because people love offense and people love stars. And Washington has had a good offense all year, and they have a bona fide star in Robert Griffin III. The Redskins coming off a big blowout division win last week over the Eagles. And so I, I think a lot of people think, hey, you know, Dallas, they've been a weak team really all year, a terrible team to back at home. The Cowboys are 0-7 against the spread in their last seven home games. They've been consistent in that they've been consistently disappointing at home. Last week was no exception when they looked for a long time like they were going to lose to the Cleveland Browns. That would have been an inexcusable loss considering where Dallas is at 5-5 five and five in terms of their position, a game back in the NFC East and still in the mix in the NFC wild card. Now, Washington's still in the mix as well, but it's desperation time for them. They're 4-6. and six. They might need to win out to make the playoffs. Realistically, that's not going to happen. Hey, I like the Washington offense you got to give Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, so much credit for what they've done with that offense this year, really totally changing their scheme to, shoot the, to suit the strengths of their players, most notably their quarterback, Robert Griffin III. And you've got to love what Robert Griffin III himself has done this year. I mean, this guy looks like he is going to be a perennial pro bowler you know, for years to come. However, Robert Griffin III is still a rookie. And if you watch him play this season, he makes some exciting, great plays he also makes some rookie mistakes, and there's been games where he's done stuff to lose the game, you know, just like he's done stuff to put them in position to win the game, and, and that's not uncommon. I have, the guy's a rookie. Every single rookie you could say that same thing about. And the, he's going on the road this week to face a Dallas defense that much improved this year, especially in the secondary. Remember last year, the Dallas secondary was, this team's, was the team's Achilles heel. This year, six in the NFL and pass defense. 
The additions of cornerback Brandon Carr and the rookie Morris Claiborne in the offseason has made a huge difference this Dallas secondary. It's not only it's not only the secondary in which they can, they're good. They're really a solid defense overall, seventh in the NFL in total yards per game. And, hey, I, I know Washington's good on offense. They lead the NFL in rush yards per game, and I guess I expect them to have some success here against Dallas, but I, I don't think they're going to be able to keep up. Dallas, they can throw the ball. Tony Romo passing for 285 yards per game this season, and Washington is terrible in the secondary. Do not let last week's result fool you when they held the Philadelphia Eagles to six points. That has everything to do with the terrible Philadelphia offense, their rookie quarterback Nick Foles, Look at the rest of Washington's season. 29th in the NFL in pass defense, 26th in total defense, 25th in scoring defense. That defense has been an absolute sieve all year, and I don't believe they're going to be able to slow down Tony Romo in this Dallas offense on Thursday. I like Dallas to snap their streak of seven consecutive against the spread losses at home. I do think they're going to cover the three and a half home against Washington. This is actually the only bet of the day that I, the only game of the day that I'm going to be having a bet on. So I do really like Dallas, minus 3.5 in this game. The nightcap, an AFC East game. New England Patriots going on the road to take on the New York Jets. Two-point spread, two spread markets being offered on this game on bet deck. New England minus 5.5 and, and New England minus 6.5. Also, two totals markets being offered, 48 and 49. Now, the first time these two teams played a few weeks ago, New England was a double-digit home favorite, and they just about lost. The Jets really outplayed them that entire game. New England ended up pulling out the win in overtime. Still, this line feels a little low here. Uh, you know, and I know it, it, it opened at New England minus 5.5, and, and Bet Deck has since put up the New England minus 6.5 market. But the Patriots, I mean, am I missing something? Is anybody else watching this, watching this offense play? 59 points last week against Indianapolis. A couple, of weeks after, a couple of weeks after they hung 45 on the St. Louis Rams, they're a machine. Number one in the NFL on total offense, number one in points scored. I'm aware that Rob Gronkowski broke his forearm last week and he'll miss this game, be out for a few weeks, and Gronkowski has turned into Tom Brady's favorite target, but apparently Aaron Hernandez is going to be back for this game, and I just have great faith in the Patriots' offense right now. Now, that being said, the Jets, they're not quite as bad as everybody makes them out to be. You know, the storyline with this Jets team all year has been so negative, but nah, they're 4-6. and six. They're actually 6-4 and four against the spread. They haven't been a bad team to back. Thing is, though, the Jets have played some good games this year, but every single one of their good games, with the exception of week one against Buffalo, with the exception of that game, every other one of their good games, I'm thinking last week against St. Louis, I'm thinking a few weeks ago against the Indianapolis Colts when they dominated that game, you know, those games looked the same. They, they pounded the ball. They were a run-first team, very conservative in the passing game, did not ask Mark Sanchez to do too much. That's the style of football Rex Ryan claims to want to play. But too often this year, the Jets have just gotten away from that. Now, maybe it's out of necessity, they've fallen behind or whatever, but I, I'm not sure the Jets are going to be able to play that style against New England on Thursday because New England scores so many points, and they're so bad in the secondary, 30th in the National Football League in pass yards per game allowed. Uh, the Jets have to pass the ball, I think, to, to keep up in this game and to have a chance. They have to open up their offense a little bit. And Sanchez had some success passing the ball a few weeks ago when he played New England, but... I do not have faith in Mark Sanchez keeping up with Tom Brady. Uh, Sanchez apologists have been saying all year that he has no weapons around him, and I think that's very true. I think he does have limited weapons around him. Now, I still don't think Sanchez is very good. I, I think even if he had more weapons around him like he's had the last couple of years, I'm not sure we, we'd see a, a big uh, uptick in his performance. But, I, you know, I, the Jets don't have a lot of weapons in the passing game. They haven't been particularly good running the ball this year. New England is better defending the run than the pass. I, I think the Jets are going to be forced to pass it, and I, I don't have much faith in them in that type of situation. I have heard a, a couple of people that I respect picking the Jets here this week to pull the upside out right, thinking that New England is maybe just not quite as good as everybody thinks they are. I'm just not ready to say that. I, I do lean towards the New England Patriots in this game. I do not feel as good about it as I do about Dallas minus 3.5. But I'd be very surprised the New York Jets were able to get out of here with a win, and I expect New England to win the game by double digits. Well, there you have it. Those are my opinions on the three games tomorrow. I hope you have a great holiday. Don't eat too much turkey and enjoy the football. I'm John Arnett. We'll talk to you soon.